Okay, hey guys, what's up? So this is gonna be a quick and dirty uh, intro into the new STM32 Cube Monitor software. It's based on Node Red, which I have never used. Um, I think I I didn't, I didn't even know it existed before this uh, STM32 Cube Monitor came out. I think it's because it's based on this sort of visual programming thing where you drag and click things to make code and every time I see and it's really colorful and every, anytime I see things like that I'm like oh that's for kids to learn how to program or something so it just looks so cartoonish or whatever so then I just ignored it I'm like I don't know what that is whatever but it's actually pretty good and it's powerful so like I said I've never worked or done anything with node red so this is gonna be a very basic intro on how to use this new um, implementation of uh, of that by ST um, so you can at least start visualizing some data and things like that uh, as I learn more perhaps I'll make more videos on that because I really like it I think it's interesting um, so for now this will just be enough to get you up and going um, when it first came out I didn't I didn't, since I didn't know what it was, I didn't understand how to do anything, and I still probably don't. But at least I can still I can now visualize uh, some data and variables in there. So I'm going to give you the rundown of just how to get going, right, from zero, I guess. Um. So here's where you would go ahead and download the software. You go to ST's website. It's called STM32 Cube Monitor. Um, you download the software. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because I already have it. There's different versions of it. There's one for uh, some sort of you know, um, power analytic things uh, to measure power, visualize data, things like that. So I'm guessing it has more um, nodes to calculate power and things like that or efficiency, whatever. Uh, there's another one that's more geared towards uh, RF and RF performance. So if you're into uh, any kind of RF or radio communication stuff, that's for you. Uh, this one is uh, for USB-C and power delivery 3.0 application, so that's interesting. But if you want just a regular uh, variable viewer, um, there's one for Linux, there's one for Mac and Windows. So download yours um, accordingly. So once you download that, uh, you can go ahead and watch this little video here. It kind of shows um, how, uh, how this thing is supposed to look and work. Uh, Additionally, from after getting it, uh, you should visit the STM32 wiki page uh, where they talk about the uh, STM32 cube monitor. Kind of gives you a rundown of what it is and, and some of the things that it can do. Uh, it's very small. There really isn't much here. So you'd probably be better off at maybe going to Node Red's website and, and, and learning from there or other uh, YouTube videos. But nevertheless, there's some information here you might want to read. Um, okay, so this is my code, right? Um, I'd also like to mention that you don't need anything aside from your whatever STM32 board you're programming, whether it's a Nucleo board or just a regular blue pill. Obviously, if you've got a blue pill, you need an ST link, right? If you have this, you don't need an ST link because there's one there. So that's all you need, just your microcontroller and your debugger, your ST link. Um, it doesn't require a COM port, though you can send communications through COM port and have it talk to that software. But um, the way it works right now, we're just going to upload our um, ELF file to the, um, our executable file to the software, and it'll do the rest. All right, so um, back to this. So my code, uh, nothing here. Only thing you need, like you can have a blank project. Uh, all, all I included, I'm sorry, is this math library. That's the only thing I'm using here. This is just other stuff I was doing. Um, so here's my main. Again, none of this. I don't need any of that. Hell, I could delete it. Uh, all I'm using is just a, a for loop and I'm just I'm going through a little sine function here to, to generate a sine a sine wave and the values of that sine wave are going to be in this y variable uh, another thing to note is this y variable is global okay 
it's up here it's out of here so it has a um, the entire program has scope to that variable and again everything else here doesn't matter because it's just this is all i'm doing so yeah i'm just doing this um i just called it y i made it volatile so that um the compiler doesn't optimize it out so that's it that's you can have an empty project with uh just your uh microcontroller header file and just uh this here and it's also important to note that your variables have to be global i think there is a way to load um maybe some sort of local variables in it i just haven't figured that out yet so for now i'm going to be looking at this global variable so then i'm going to go open up the cube monitor software which loads on a different window so when you first open it up uh this is what it looks like or maybe not i'm not sure you may or may not have this so let me just uh delete that so if you do get a blank screen which you may or may not i don't remember um you can go here to this little corner thing and you go to import you go to the library and there's a basic flow and the advanced flow you can start off with the basic i found some configurations in the in the advanced one were wrong and they didn't work for me so i just stopped messing with it and um uh, you go ahead and use the load up the basic one so then it loads up this tab right here which is basic flow all right um can i actually zoom into this um i don't know how to zoom if anybody knows nope guess not whatever uh so you'll have to maximize your youtube window okay so some things to note uh i am using uh kyle i this is i'm sorry this is visual studio ide I press uh, certain keyboard shortcuts to upload and flash to build in flash right so when I press this it uh, opens up this window it does this and it flashes my uh, it flashes my microcontroller if you're using Kyle and you're using the ST link it takes control over the ST link and then this thing can't use it so once you've got your program and you know you've uploaded it to the to, to your chip you need to release the st link you can do that um i'll show you in just a second so you can do that a couple of ways one you can close kyle and it'll release the st link or you can go to flash and just kind of maybe you know select something else and just press ok and that should release the st link uh, so if you're going back and forth between this and this there's that issue of who has control of the SD link because right here you'll know it's going to say not connected or something so that's one thing to uh, to note um, so you're going to go here uh, to this my probe out and you're going to it should pop up with your SD link if you have it connected and you press done then you go to my probe in and you find the st link again and you press done um so then you're going to go to this my variables things and this as you can these are nodes made by uh st link or something i'm not sure tell you the truth like i said i don't know much about this but all i know is you're going to go to my variables here um again not to be confused with this my variables this one is different if you notice the icons this is actually a i think it's called a no it's not a processing this is a processing node let's see variables yeah so you see the icon the little stripes here so this is variables this is actually a processing node which has been renamed my variables okay anyways so you go up to this one the variables node you're going to go to the section where it says executable that's where you're going to click the little uh, pen you're going to enter the 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 path to the folder where your executable is so if you're using kyle you can right click on your main you go to open containing folder then you go to objects and it's going to be that axf file that's going to be the um the file it's looking for but we don't need that file we need the path right so I, i'm going to copy the path um i'm going to go here press paste when you do that it'll pop up here with the axf file you click on it 
and then you see all the global variables you have and you select the one you want but i'm not using that kyle project i'm using this project right now and this one is somewhere else so this one is here all the way here and this one is a that's the path uh let me go here that's the path and cube monitor and it's the same similar projects so i'm going to select the variable that i'm wanting to do on my chart here why um it doesn't let me add because i need to name it so let's uh, just call it variable underscore y you can call it whatever you want so i press add um and once i press add you see this thing popped up and there's my variable which you can't edit because it's telling me that it loaded it up uh here's the address where it's stored and here's the data type and none of this is edible um this is gonna i guess the sample frequency um and since i'm doing a sine wave if i do any other frequency other than a sequential loop it's gonna look like a step you can see the steps so i, I just do this um yeah this i just leave by default but uh you can play with that okay so that's this thing we were just editing so now let's go here and here you see that um it has the variable loaded already the one uh that i'm you know that i'm going to be using y and there's really nothing to edit here if it asks you for a group name or if this is empty then just drag down until you see that where it says my variables or whatever you named this thing uh if we go back here see how it says group name is my variable so whatever you name this thing that's what you're going to look for over here oops my variables right uh so yeah none of this i edit this is you can do some post processing so if you want to take whatever value that is you can do like a whole formula here you do plus minus modulus etc so you can add a, a formula here and it'll just do some post processing to that uh to that variable which is neat and that should be enough to get you going i'm going to go ahead and press deploy and you'll see here it may or may not it'll tell you by these little uh, triangles and things here what needs to be configured um as you can see this right here says connected if i go to kyle and try to upload something it won't let me because this uh software has control of the st link and vice versa if i upload something and then i come over here and start doing this and this won't have control of the st link that's really annoying i don't know they need to fix that or something or we'll find a way around it um because when i do it with this visual studio ide it doesn't do that so anyway so this should be pretty much set and you have to actually have your chip connected and running it's not going to work with just the executable file you can start the acquisition and holy shit what happened what is that weird value let's see what did we do wrong my probe in no log my variables let's see what did we do wrong Mm, no, everything seems correct to Mundo. My chart. Hmm. Don't know what is going on. Go. Okay, let's do something because um, my Visual Studio IDE it doesn't really output an ELF file it outputs um the file without the dot elf extension so i always have to go and add it so that's it right there uh let's close this open this up over here again okay see how it told me that it's been updated because the file changed so i'll press update okay um my code should be fine right yeah okay and it is running on my chip re-upload it just to make sure 
Okay, I don't know if it's uploading or not. That's interesting. Uh, deploy. I'm configured. Who cares? There it is. Um, so it's gonna go from zero to two hundred, and there's the sine wave. Now. going relatively slow I wonder why that is because it's going faster before but hey we're learning here together did I add anything no I did not hmm. Control loop, yeah. that's fine that's fine access point if you see this access point it'll say negative one or something it'll it won't let you click done I remember that now um press Press it up to go to zero and it should let you. I'm just wondering why it's going so slow. It was going faster before. Can't be my program because. Oof. It was uh. Okay, anyways, whatever. It's it's there. It's a sine wave. It's going. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add a, uh, a gauge to this. And uh, that's pretty neat too. But it's, an, it's tricky. Uh, not tricky, but I didn't know how to do it. So you're gonna drag this uh, single value node, then you're gonna drag this gauge node because uh, that's how you do it. Plug that to that. Plug this to the variable. Over here in the single thingy, you're gonna give it a name. Just put uh variable y whatever and then you're going to type in your variable as it appears in your code so it's y and that's it that's how it is in my code so i press done the gauge it's going to be from 0 to 200 that's what the sine wave is doing you can change the color grade gradient the way it appears so let's do this uh sort of blue like a sort of a sequential ever lightning blue Okay. Uh yep, and that's it. Deploy that baby. Go to your dashboard. You may only see basic here, this advanced one, it's because I opened the other advanced ones and even if I restart the software they still appear here. It's really annoying. Anyways, I go to home. So there's the gauge. Start your acquisition. And there it is. Going back and forth from 0 to 200 and 0 to 200 over here. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's really, that's all I know how to do right now. Uh, I don't know how to do anything else. Um, you could also, uh, I think you can change the, the chart. Let's do bar. I haven't done bar yet. So I changed the chart into a bar chart. Yeah, that's really not that interesting. It obliterates my sine wave. <laughs> but uh, the cool thing is that, okay, so I only have one variable um, showing up in that chart. But uh, obviously you can have two variables or multiple variables going on in there. And, uh, you, you know, you can visualize that. So that's really it guys that's that's all i have i know it's very basic but like i said i've, I've never encountered this uh sort of platform I, I i wish i knew a way to uh to edit this interface like how do i control where this appears what if i want it on this side or on this side um i know you can control how big the things are for example if you go to my chart you go to size you can change how big it is. So let's say I want it like that big. Uh, let's go to the gauge thingy. Gauge size auto. Let's say I want the gauge that big. Let's see what that looks like. But that's it. I, I'm not sure how you go about where your things are placed. So there you go. I made it a little bit smaller. But they're still next to each other. It's so ugly like that. I mean under each other. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. Enjoy yourselves.